In part one of our episode on non-invasive reverse torque removal of dental implants, we talked about what it is and how it's done. In part two, we're going to answer the five most commonly asked questions about dental implant removal. Everything you wanted to know about this remarkable technique. I'm Dr. Ryan Kazami, and welcome to Hints and Tips in Dentistry. In part one of this episode, we talked about how the reverse torque technique works for removal of dental implants. So now, let's take a look at the five most commonly asked questions about this remarkable technique. The first question often asked is, does the reverse torque technique work on implants that were placed years ago and have healed and integrated completely in place? The answer is absolutely yes. Now the reason for this is that using this reverse torque technique, we can place a very high reverse load onto the implant, which effectively disrupts the bone to implant connection. The process of implant healing known as osseointegration is a mechanical bond between the implant surface and the bone itself. So it's quite possible to remove implants with this technique by simply rotating it, even if the implants have been in place for years and are fully integrated. Second question, is the procedure painful? The answer is, it is not painful. Now, why is this? As we talked about, the reverse torque technique does not require incisions, cutting of bone, which all contribute to the post-operative recovery, longer recovery, as well as, as, well as post-operative pain and swelling. So because we're using this conservative technique, where we rotate in the implant out, it is a non-invasive technique with essentially no pain. Patients typically take a over-the-counter uh, medications, perhaps for a day or two, and do not require any stronger medications after that. The procedure can be done under local anesthesia or IV sedation in an oral surgery environment and is really quite tolerated well and patients have a very rapid recovery. The third question is, does the technique work on all implant types? The answer is yes, except two specific circumstances. Now, the technique for reverse stroke technique essentially works um, on screw type dental implants. These are a type of titanium implants that have a threaded design and they have an internal well where the abutment and the restorations are connected into. So the reverse torque technique and the device are highly effective when it comes to the screw type implants. However, there are two other types of implants that this technique will not work for. The first is if we have a ceramic dental implant in a one piece design. These are zirconia, or, or uh, ceramic dental implants that essentially are composed of a single unit of the implant and the abutment itself. As a result, there is no internal access to engage the uh, reverse torque device. The second circumstances where this technique will not work is if you have a bicon dental implant. A bicon implant is essentially a press fit type of an implant. It doesn't have the screw type design as a conventional implant used, and hence it cannot be reversed out. Also, the internal aspect of these implants are quite short, so there's not enough room to engage the device into. So the question is, what do we do when we have ceramic implants or bicon implants that need to be removed? The technique that we use for these two circumstances is utilization of a piezotome or a, um, a piezo technique as known as, where it's utilizing a special ultrasound device 
to gently remove the bone around the implant. Now, it is probably a bit more conservative technique than using the trefine burr that we had described earlier. With this technique, we can do a very gentle removal of the bone around the implant and dislodge and loosen the implant while it's still a bit more invasive than using the reverse short technique it is considerably less invasive than using the troughing technique or the device or the rotary device to cut the bone around uh, and patients respond quite well to that obviously we end up with a little bit of a larger defect these are typically grafted at the same time in order to restore the defect the next question is do i need bone grafting after the implant has been removed well, there are three main circumstances where a bone graft or a soft tissue graft may be indicated. Let's talk about the bone graft itself. The first circumstances is when we have an existing implant with periimplantitis and infection with loss of bone from this um, pathology or from this, uh, from this condition and results in loss of bone around the implant. The second circumstance is when there is loss of bone and tissue from implants that have been malpositioned uh, or placed outside of the alignment with the restoration. The third circumstance for bone grafting is if the implant has been placed in the back of the upper jaw with perforation into the maxillary sinus. In such cases, if the implant has to be removed, there has to be a bone grafting technique to restore the deficiency and create a separation between the sinus cavity and the mouth. Let's look at the first indication for bone grafting. Here's a case where the implant was removed and at the same time the bone was grafted and we can achieve a very predictable outcome with restoration of the defect for placement of a new dental implant which is then restored with a new crown, and this can have a very good prognosis in long term. The next question, am I a candidate for another implant since the first one failed? Many patients who go through uh, a failure of a dental implant are concerned about its success the second time around, and rightfully so. So the answer is yes, with proper restoration, of the foundation, a second replacement is a very predictable treatment. However, this has got to be done in a slow and staged fashion. What that means is that after the removal of the implant, we need to give adequate time for the gum tissue and the bone to heal. We have to then reassess the deficiency of the bone and consider a proper bone grafting technique to restore the defect and then follow our digital workflow to place the new dental implant in absolutely the right position for a new restoration uh, for a patient. So the answer is if we slow down the process and use what I call one miracle at a time techniques and sequencing, one can achieve a highly successful uh, outcome after a failed implant uh, circumstance. So let me give you my tips on the reverse torque technique for dental implant removal, frequently asked questions. First, the reverse torque technique works on totally integrated and healed implants. Regardless of whether the implant was placed recently or several years ago, and if it, if it has even healed completely uh, in the bone, the technique works. It can effectively break the bond between the implant and the bone and can be reversed out of the position. Number two, the technique is pain-free during removal and very, very minor discomfort for a day or two, easily managed by over-the-counter analgesics. Patients return to their life, work, and school uh, immediately, and there is no significant post-operative healing and uh, recovery. Number three, it is highly effective on screw type implants. These are the implants that have the threaded design with an internal attachment mechanism that can engage the device 
for the reverse torque technique. When we have ceramic or Bicon implants, these will require slightly different techniques. We talked about the piezo technique, where you can conservatively remove the bone around the implant and still uh, um, remove these type of implants in those indicated cases. Number four, the bone grafting is indicated if there is a bone loss or sinus perforation. So with implants that have um, suffered loss of bone either from infection or if they are communicating with the sinus or if there's a deficiency from malpositioning, it is important to restore the bone, to restore the gum tissue and set the foundation for a future dental implant and restoration. And last, the technique is highly predictable and revision cases, cases, patients that have to have a new implant placed uh, are highly successful. So just because it, the implant failed the first time and had to be removed, it does not impact the success of a redo or a revision. Often we can achieve a very successful outcome if we follow the proper protocol, if we follow the proper site foundation development and placement of the implant using our digital workflow for optimal precision and accuracy. Removal of failing or ailing dental implants in the old days used to be a very difficult and traumatic experience. But now with this remarkable technique, we can easily and quickly remove such implants and prepare the site for replacement at a later time. In many circumstances, the attempt to treat failing implants have, uh, let's say, failed. So it is more predictable to have it removed with reverse torque technique and replace it with a new implant restoration. I'm Dr. Ryan Kazemi, and see you again soon at the next Hints and Tips in Dentistry.